A nationwide plot to force kids to work for free and live in terrible conditions has led to criminal charges. Federal prosecutors say the ringleaders answered to a man based in KCK. This is Royal Jenkins. We're talking about a group called the United Nation of Islam, or UNOI. Investigative reporter Angie Racona has been following this all day for us. She joins us now from our newsroom with what we know about this group. Angie? Well, Carolyn, UNOI also goes by the promise keepers and the value creators, so different names. But a judge just simplified the matter when he called them a cult. Prosecutors say they preyed on kids and families wanting education. Instead, it was forced labor. Five men and three wives of Royale Jenkins face criminal charges of conspiracy and forced labor. Investigators say children were sent to businesses all over the country to work for free. The defendants promoted the idea that the victims owed a duty to Allah, which meant working at a UNIO business. The defendants convinced the victims that if they did not comply with the rules, including performing their, quote, duty, or if they left UNIO, they would burn in an eternal hellfire or experience tragedy. Those who broke the rules also received Fruit of Islam beatdowns. Royal Jenkins is the leader of the group. He started in Maryland but moved the group to KCK and eventually released videos on YouTube. I'm the one that everybody's expecting to come, although they don't believe it. <laughs> Jenkins claimed that in approximately 1978, he was abducted by angels who transported him through the galaxy in a spaceship and instructed him how to rule on Earth. The kids are all now grown adults. One woman successfully sued UNOI in civil court back in 2018. She was awarded $8 million. Now we are seeing criminal charges. Carolyn? Angie, thank you. And KCTV5's Nathan Vickers dug deeper into the former headquarters of this group. He's live for us now in Kansas City, Kansas, at a now abandoned building that people in the neighborhood remember as a rather unfriendly place. Right, Nathan? That's right. We found out that this uh, building was a former school of UNOI. And uh, even on the sidewalk, you can see it says the letters UN. Oh, I. And so a lot of people here kind of knew what was going on, but they only had a glimpse of the activities here. Here's what they told us they remember. Decades ago, people in this neighborhood used to send their kids to what was then Roosevelt Elementary. They came in and out of the front door. Phyllis, who's lived around here for 30 years, remembers only bits and pieces of the owners who came next. As far as I know, they turned it into a school and then a place of worship on the on the weekends. She would only give us her first name, fearing retaliation from the United Nation of Islam, a group she described as secretive and at times unfriendly. They didn't come outside. If The only way that we saw any of the kids was if the girls were doing some drill out here in front. She says only members were allowed in the building. Sometimes they'd host larger conventions with other UNOI groups. These were big coach buses that brought them in and they would line the streets where you couldn't hardly get up and down the street. She never suspected it was a cult and never knew about anything happening inside. Nothing like the abuse outlined in charging documents, which state the defendants required the youth members to live in crowded conditions, follow a very restricted diet, and work long hours in UNOI operated businesses. Phyllis did notice that the adults were not always friendly toward the kids. It seemed like a very strict school because of the way that, you know, if somebody messed up, they were right in their face. When the group moved out several years ago, she didn't miss them. I was just glad for them to be gone when they left. And we talked to some people on the street who said that uh, UNOI sold this building a few years ago, so they no longer own it, they no longer operate here. This building has been abandoned for the past uh, eight or nine years, they said. Reporting live, Nathan Vickers, KCTV 5 News. Thanks, Nathan.